Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show and today is a two-part episode. In part one, it's going to be all about the new line of prestige headphones from Grado. That's their entry-level series. And in part two of today's episode, uh, well, I'm going to talk about U-Turn Audio. They're a US-based turntable manufacturer making very, very, very affordable turntables. And just recently, they made their 100,000th turntable. They were founded in 2012. So from 2012 to 2021, 100,000 turntables. But first, Grado. Now, Grado is, is a Brooklyn-based company. They build, they hand-build all of their headphones here, headphones and phone cartridges, actually. And uh, it's a family-owned business with uh, John Grado and his two sons, Jonathan and Matthew. And, well, they've been making, not these guys, but the elder Grado, actually John's uncle, Joe, uh, founded the company and started working out of that building in 19. 53. So yeah, there's some history there. But bringing the history up to the present, this Prestige series, which includes the SR60X, the 80, 125, 225, and 325X, prices range from $99 to $295. The X series is, uh, uses a new generation driver, the fourth generation driver. Impedance is listed at 38 ohms. So, you know, oh, I, uh, I did a factory tour, a video factory tour, a few years ago, and I'm going to link to that tour right up there, and you can see them making headphones and phono cartridges here in Brooklyn. But as for this new line, well, they kind of look exactly like the old model, the E-series, uh, prestige line, except they have a spiffy new cables that look more durable. They're nice, nicely finished, uh, but they are not as previous generations of Grado headphones. The cables are not user replaceable. Someday, someday. I keep asking for that and eventually it's going to happen. I like that they're now using the new flat ear pads as opposed to the big bowl shaped ones they used to have. I like the flatter ear pads. I think they sound better and I think they're a bit more comfortable too. Now, the 325X has a real leather uh, ear uh, headband um, stitched in white. It's pretty snazzy. The ear cups are solid aluminum or machined aluminum ear cups. Um, pretty much that's it. That's all we got to tell you about, specifically about these models. The, the entry level, the SR60X, is, is mostly plastic, a thinner headband. But the, but the Grado sound is pretty consistent from one headphone to the next. They all sound like Grados. And they are all open back headphones, meaning you hear the world around you. And the sound stage itself, they, they sound, well, less like you're wearing headphones than you will hear with closed back headphones. A bit less. A bit less. But anyway, I have the original 325, well not the original, a 325E headphone here, and I compared it to the 325X. And I was using, well, my, my source for this system was the Topping D30 Pro DAC that I reviewed very recently. There's a link to it right there. And also the Jotunheim 3 headphone amplifier. And yeah, I'll link to that up there too. But anyway, so that was the, the front end for this system when I was listening to Cobuzz and Tidal on my computer. But the sound difference, well, first of all, the 325E, the older model, you know what? That's a really beautiful sounding headphone. It is so spacious, sweet sounding, just beautiful. You know, you just put it on and say, yeah, that's good. Now, I will say that the Grado sound isn't a universal, right? It's not like everybody loves Grado. But the people that love Grado really, really, really love Grado. And I've made the analogy before, but not lately, that Grados are sort of the headphone equivalent to horn speakers. They have that lively dynamic. They, they just feel like you're hearing, well, a direct feed from the microphone. That's, 
That is the Grado sound with their headphones, absolutely. And I think it's always been. I've li been listening to Grado headphones since uh, the late 80s, actually. I used to sell them. They were very expensive headphones in their time, although those headphones that I sell sold in the late 80s for, I think, $595 are now worth, if they're in good condition, a couple of thousand dollars. So yeah, Grados definitely have staying power, absolutely. The first music selection for today is Weird Nightmare. That's the name of the album. It was produced by Hal Wilner, the amazing producer. Uh, and it's, it's a tribute to Charles Mingus, the bass player and composer. And it's sensual music. It's spacious. It's odd. It has a weird edge to it. But I think it's incredibly beautiful and a really, really nice recording. So I'm listening to it over the 325E and just digging the sound. I'm thinking, I love this one. This is one of my favorite affordable Grados, the 325E. But I switched over, I popped on the 325X, SR325X, and immediately the sound was considerably more transparent. Just leading edges were, were crisper, uh, the bass filled out a bit more, and of course being a Grado, the sound is extremely open and not like stuck inside my head. So you, there are differences, but if you have a 325E and you really love it, it's still a really good headphone. I, I love it. And I popped on, I took off the 325X and popped on the SR60X, and the sound is the Grado sound, just less so. Less pure, less clear, less bottom end. But the, as I say, the Grado signature is, is there fully intact on the SR60X good starter headphone. For new music, the new Citizen Cope album, He's Alone on acoustic guitar. And it's one of those recordings that's uh, a little too close, a little too close mic, a little too dry, meaning it doesn't sound like he's playing in an actual room. It's a little, actually it's very compressed music, unnecessarily so. And the 325X was was cluing me into those deficiencies. There was no doubt about that. Well, the music itself was good. Citizen Cope, man, just on the guitar, he's putting a lot into his music. But I wished it was less mess with. You know what I'm saying? Why do they do this to records? For comparison, I pulled out my uh, Audio-Technica ATH M50X over-the-ear headphones, full-size headphones, closed back, um, but a long-term budget reference of mine. And I played this newly expanded and remastered uh, Amy Winehouse Live at the BBC album. It's really good. Oh man, that woman can sing. It's actually, it's, you know, recorded live in different situations, but the overall recording quality is excellent. And that woman could just, it just came out of her. She just, it's so effortless, so beautiful, so so human. She was so, I just love that woman, that her voice, and I miss her so. Comparing the M50X to the 325X, well, it's a difference of uh, space. The, the M50X sounded crowded by comparison. The sound was more st stuck inside my cranium. There was, it was more mid-rangey, more mid-range forward. Her voice just was pushed ahead. There was the top end wasn't as clear as the 325X. The, there was less bottom end than the 325X. Um, but it was that sense of being just less open, because it was, was the biggest and most obvious difference between the two headphones. I think the M50X is a killer headphone. It really is. But this one, 325X, just, just put it to shame. It just did. So there you go. So yeah, I think the new uh, X series is an advance over the E in terms of resolution, uh, openness, and the bottom end push is a little more has more weight to it than the old than the E series that replaces. So let's move on to U-Turn Audio now celebrating the sale of their 100,000th turntable. Now I met the the founders. Uh, Peter, Robert, and Ben, in 2012, they had a Kickstarter program. I wrote about it when I was still at CNET. 
and they hit their mark and they started a company. And I remember talking to them in 2012 when this, when this, when this was launched and asking questions like, so do you guys know anything about manufacturing? <laughs> it's kind of important. Uh, well, they're going to learn on the job. And they made some mistakes. And their early runs of turntables, they were, they were good. And they were certainly the right price. The basic turntable, their entry-level model, was $179 in 2013, I think, when they actually started making them. Today, 2021, still $179. It's made in the U.S. in Woburn, uh, Massachusetts, um, with parts mostly sourced from U.S. suppliers. Um, $179, belt drive turntable. Instead of just buying an off-the-shelf tone arm, which is what many turntable manufacturers do, even when they're you know, pretty far down the road of manufacturing, U-Turn from day one made their own tone arm. Really impressive. It started out as a uni-pivot. It's no longer a uni-pivot. Now it's a gimbal arm. It's, I think, the third iteration of their tone arm. But it's made by them in-house. Pretty impressive. They now have 25 or 26 employees. Um, and I'm putting up pictures of their production. And it's so impressive. I mean... Who else makes turntables in the U.S.? Well, VPI, obviously, right? And I'm sure there are others I can't think of right now. But nothing at this price, $179. So that's the basic model, and there's two models above, and I think they top out at $459. There's also a phono preamp that they're making themselves. Uh, it's actually built in to the top-of-the-line model, so it's not a separate box, in other words. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah. They're growing, and um, it's still uh, moving forward as a company. But I'm impressed that they didn't, you know, also make a lot of other stuff that they're not really good at. They didn't make speakers or... No, they're just making turntables. They're focusing on what they do well. Now, that's not to say that they're not going to expand in the future. Um, and I asked them about future models and where they were going. They're pretty tight-lipped about that. So U-Turn Audio, yeah. Very, very impressive. Congratulations on your 100,000th turntable. Looking forward to... And they said they're going to hit 200,000 pretty quick. They told me, and now I can't remember what it was, but because their, their sales pace has been accelerating and accelerating and accelerating, so it's not going to take uh, eight years or nine years to get to 200,000 turntables. So thanks, guys. Thanks for doing what you do. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I do here, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Couldn't be easier. Just hit that button right down there. When you do, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time there is an incredible new episode. Maybe not quite as incredible as this one. I can't make any promises. You could also check out my Patreon, which is at... P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash audiophiliac. And there's also playlists, playlists for many, 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 many more equipment reviews, including speaker reviews and headphone reviews and electronics reviews and even music reviews. So, you know, I also do interviews. I don't know if you've noticed. Uh, and, some, and one of my favorites is Bob Clear Mountain. He's a recording engineer, mix engineer, rarely, sometimes even a producer. But we met at a show, and we had a great conversation. There's a link to that Bob Clear Mountain review up there. But he, he's, I think he's mixed Rolling Stones records and Bob, Bruce Springsteen and the Ramones. His Ramones story is particularly funny. Uh, great guy. We really hit it off. So check out that interview. And to the interview I did just a few days ago, well, a month or so ago, with this guy Frank, who owns a restaurant I go to all the time, who's in, his name is Frank, and the restaurant is called Frank. And he has an interesting system, but his passion for music and food, we talk a lot about food, it's a first for an audiophiliac uh, interview. But anyway, he talked about food, because he's got some a YouTube channel, an Instagram channel, and just an amazingly charismatic guy, Frank is. So anyway, check out those interviews. And now I can say my work here is finally and at last complete. Thank you so much for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.